service by giving glory to God, singing Holy, 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 hymn number 73. Life is vain. 
this morning. Just fill out the pink card in front of you in the pew there and hold it up and our deacon will come around and pick it up from you. Let's open our worship service with Holy God We Praise Your Name, hymn number 30. And uh, could you please stand? This morning praising your name we thank you Lord for the mystery that has been revealed to us through your son Jesus Christ we thank you for the blood that was shed on the cross for our sins we thank you Lord for the hope that you have for our future we invite your presence to be with us now as we worship you may our words and our songs and our actions be honorable in your sight, O oh Lord. We pray this through thy son Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh. 
Okay, it's time for children's story. So children, I know there's children out there. Please come up and Miss Cheever will give you her the story today. how Jesus saves some children. But I want you to think first, what day is this? Sabbath. Is that Tuesday? Monday? What day of the week? Saturday. So on Saturday we come to church. Well, this story happened in a little town a long ways away, and most of the people went to church on Sunday. They didn't believe the commandment to go on Saturday. And they were angry at the people who went on Saturday. So these two little boys, about the size of this little boy, and maybe that girl, but they were not very big. And they had to ride the school bus to school. Now they lived where there were mountains. And you know, if you go up in the mountains, if you look on this side, it might go way down. And you look over here, and the rocks go over this way. So the bus was going around the mountain like this, and something was in the road. A rock or a donkey or another car came over and the front wheel of the bus started to go off the road. And the bus driver said, hang on kids, hang on. And the bus started to tip over like this, you know, and it was going to slide down the mountain. Very scary. So, it slid a little ways, and these two little boys, Edmund and Anise, they said, God will protect us. Jesus will protect us. But the bus was turning on its side, and they couldn't hang on to their seats. And then all of a sudden, the bus stopped, just on its side. And the bus driver said, is everyone all right? Are you kids OK? And they said, we're, yes, yes. But they were scared. And there were cars coming down, and they stopped and said, we have to get those children out before that bus slides clear down the mountain. So they got the children out, and the word spread, you know, cars came from here, and cars came from here, and men came with ropes to keep the bus from sliding. And some of the people came up, and they said, it's the fault of those kids that go to church on Saturday. If they go on Sunday, this wouldn't happen. It's all their fault. God's punishing them. Well, when Edmund and Anise's mother heard this, she got a little bit upset. And she said, no, because my children were on the bus, all of your children were saved. Now, see if you can think, how did Jesus keep the bus from sliding down the mountain? Got an idea? How did Jesus keep that bus from sliding down the mountain? Have you been up to the mountains up here? Have you seen the big trees? Well, there weren't very many trees on that mountain because they'd been cut down. But they didn't cut the stumps down, and that bus had just slid against a stump and stopped. And all those children were safe. So Edmund and Anissa's mother said, it's because my children were there. We worship the true God, and we go to church on Saturday because that's the day he said, and because my children were there, your children were all safe. So they were protected because who planted the tree? Who makes the trees grow? Does Jesus make the trees grow? Sure, you can't make one grow, but he can. So now when you say your prayers, remember, thank Jesus for keeping you safe and protecting you. Okay? Thank you. Children, children, come and listen. Come and hear of Jesus' love. Children, children, come and see.
Well, it's time for offering. Will the deacons come forward? Well, the day's offering is for church budget, but you know, being a holiday season, we get all kinds of phone calls and stuff in the mail for needy people that need things, and they're all worthy, but we also need to keep our church open, keep the lights on, keep the heat on, so people can come in and enjoy a nice warm church and warm people. So uh, today's a church budget, give what you can, and uh, don't forget to uh, fill up our uh, jug out there. It's, it's kind of hungry, and we want to fill it to the top before the end of the year. Shall we bow our heads? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath day. We thank you for this Christmas season coming up, that we can serve you, we can help the less fortunate. We love you. Be with us. Be with the people around the world. We ask in your son Jesus' precious name. Amen.
morning, everyone. It's always uh, a smaller group of people than the day after uh, candlelight communion, isn't it? We're glad to see each of you made it back out here again and uh, welcome you. We, uh, we had a great night last night, didn't we? A lot of good food and fellowship and beautiful evening. We thank all of you who came. Those of you who didn't make it, we're sorry you missed it. We uh, have uh, one other event coming up this weekend, and that is our miniature golf and pizza, which is uh, at Fiesta Village. You can meet there at 1 o'clock, or you can be here at 12.30 to, uh, to get a ride and carpool over to Fiesta Village from here. Uh, you don't have to uh, uh, put any extra money in your wallet for this, because it's all covered by the social committee. So uh, come out and play a little a little miniature golf, enjoy a little fellowship there with your church family on Sunday afternoon. Um, you'll notice the huge thank you in the back of your bulletin there uh, to, uh, to Bonnie. Uh, she put in a lot of work making things beautiful this week. To uh, Darla and uh, JD, who did a lot of the work here getting our wreaths and things up and the, and the uh, pews decorated. Uh, we got this uh, nice scene. Wasn't that beautiful last night, the, uh, the uh, manger scene outside here? Uh, this came from the Bodeway family that uh, they'd had in their family for years, um, Grandpa Bodeway, and uh, it's uh, much appreciated. We're trying to keep it together. It's getting old and brittle, <laughs> and, uh, but it's, it's very nice, and we appreciate that. Kay and uh, Kay Gines and Eva and Carl and Tom and Ben and Crystal and Art and Tammy and Anna Mae and um, Barbara and Eddie. Um, there's some beautiful pictures that are up here in the, uh, in, in the hall there that uh, hopefully you've noticed of Noah. And this was donated uh, and uh, Eddie put it up for his sister who donated them. And uh, we uh, really appreciate that, they're very beautiful. We had conference people come by to visit to add to my stress of the week. They came by Wednesday morning and, uh, and visited here, seven of them, the president and vice presidents, treasurer and all, and uh, wanted to look all around the facility. So um, got down here early and had the place all, as you call, staged as best as we could. So um, um, all the lights on and everything looking uh, as good as possible. And uh, even though we have projects left here that need to get done, uh, I think they were very favorably impressed with the uh, facility that we have here. And uh, so we just uh, were glad that uh, when they walked by, um, one of them stopped and really admired those, those paintings. That's what made me think about them coming on Wednesday. <clears throat> the um, um, membership transfer we have here, we have Michael, Susan, and Karen Sadar. Unfortunately, they've gone back to gone back to Tennessee, don't know what got into Mike, but they're gone and they are transferring to the Harrison Church back there in Tennessee. And, uh, and then uh, we have Rebecca back here with us. And uh, Rebecca, why don't you stand up? Okay, Rebecca is transferring from the Arlington Church back here home again. So uh, is there a motion? And second? All in favor say welcome, Becky. All right, <laughs> and, and uh, Becky, you can come to the back here and be hugged and welcomed again, okay? All right, and then, uh, then the uh, Sadars, we need to make a motion on that. Thank you. Is there a second? All right, we're sorry to see them go, but all in favor say aye. Thank you. Okay, also remember the Christmas potluck and party coming up a week from tomorrow. Doug, welcome back from the desert. And, uh, and that's going to be, I don't know what time. Sand, did we, did you have a giant time for that yet? It's for a Christmas party on the 20th, in the potluck. One to, f one to four? So you're being consistent. This one's one to four, and then next one's one to four. Make it easy for you to remember. All right. Okay, we have a couple other items I need to uh, draw your attention to here this morning. Um, dandelions. That's you people who have gray hair, no hair, or colored hair. <laughs> um, we are meeting for breakfast at 10 a.m. on Thursday morning, okay? 10 a.m. Thursday morning, dandelion breakfast at the Redlands IHOP. 
and uh, so uh, join for that. Quilting still meeting uh, this month on Wednesdays until Christmas time comes. And um, the other thing is next Saturday night, I should probably remind you, there is a movie night, and you can see that information. Here's your insert for the Fiesta Village. Here's the one for Do You Believe Movie showing next Saturday night. And then Mesa Grande has an insert here as well for you. So you got lots of stuff to not get lost over and just look at later before I break this. This is someone's lid to a soup from last night. And they, they didn't leave the lid, but what they did is they, they took the crock pot and they took another lid. And it doesn't, if you have a crock pot and your lid doesn't exactly fit, and you can see uh, partially, um, partially exposed, partially kind of uh, getting old on there, a name that says on the lid, Sumsky. <laughs> if you happen to have that one, Bonnie would gladly trade you, okay? It looks exactly the same, yeah. But this one here is a little bigger, okay. So you got a lid that's too small. Come, come do a trade. All right. This year for our Christmas, um, instead of giving out food like we did at Thanksgiving and like we did at Thanksgiving and Christmas last year, we're um, you know, just helping the people with food as we normally do, but not having Christmas baskets. But we have Christmas gifts. So I have names here, and I'm going to come around, and Bonnie's going to stand up, and she's going to try to get your name down, whoever takes these names. I've got a bunch of boys and girls. How many are there all total? Okay, we have 40, and some have taken them already, so I don't have 40 total here. But um, I've got uh, the boys here, ages 3 to 13, it looks like. And, uh, and then I've got girls left here that are ages, let's see here. Um, looks like they're mostly like 8 to 11. No, 14 even. So, no, here's a 5-year-old. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come around and we're going to take care of this missionary work right now, okay? And if you would like to take a name or two or three or however many you'd like, um, then I'm going to get those to you. So it's going to take just a few minutes to do this. But like I said, pardon? Okay, so make sure that Bonnie gets your name written down here so she knows where the uh, gifts are going to be coming from. The gifts need to be returned here in two weeks, two weeks from today. Okay, so I'm going to change mics, please. All right, let's start with the boys. Then we'll go to girls. Who would like to have a boy's name? Okay, do you have an age preference? How many would you like? One boy, one girl. Okay, here we go. Here we go, and pass that down, please. Okay, and you want a girl? Girls are going fast. Okay, here we go. Mary wants a girl. There, pass one of those down to Mary. Okay, what would you like? Boy, age particular? Okay. One, three. Good morning. Yep. Okay, I'll run back there. Oh, boy? There you go. Okay, I'm going to hit this side here. Yes? Girl. You got an eight year old there. How's that? Okay. Age doesn't matter? Younger? Okay, that's down there for Leanne. And Leanne. Are you getting all these okay? Yeah, I think so. Okay. <laughs> Can't read my writing, but. <laughs> okay, those are Leanne. And then that's both for Leanne. Mm -hmm. We got Miranda, Miranda, Miranda. and Jaden. Okay, and what did you want? A boy and a girl. Okay, you got a 12 year old. Sorry, my bad. How about a little boy? Okay. These are for Art and I. Okay. All right. What? We want a boy and a girl. I don't care what age. 
Okay, Bonnie, we're going with a boy and a girl here. We got Anthony, seven year old, and Michaela, 10 years old. Anthony and Michaela. Okay, and? A little boy about three. Let's see how close I can get the three here. Okay. Lexi, 14. Ooh. Hang on to these cards. Okay, I got a four-year-old. How's that? Okay, Jenny's five years old. Oh, the girls are gone. Sorry. We got boys, though. Young boy. How about six-year-old? Okay, she has these two here. Okay, and Alfred. Okay, we get back. Yes, we have boys. How about Robert? Robert, there we have. About Isaac for you. Ten-year-old? Yeah. Here, you have a seven-year-old and you have a ten-year-old. <laughs> okay, I have boys 13 and 15. Miss anybody back here? Raise your hand. I have 13 and 15. Well, okay. Thank you so much. They are gone. Well, that took a little time, but this is good missionary work, isn't it? All right, well, uh, thank you very much for participating in this. I appreciate that. The children and families will greatly appreciate uh, giving them a, uh, a nicer, nicer Christmas. So we will continue on with, with James at this time. Morning, church family. Today's, today's scripture can be found in Isaiah 43. Uh, verse 2. And it reads, When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Good morning. We have uh, many prayer requests this morning. I'll start off with our first one. It's from Shannon. Pray for a friend, Michael, that he chooses the course of the Lord, making God his comfort and strength. This is also from Shannon. Today is Marita's last Sabbath with the Arden Hills family. Pray for her that her friends, family, and her new church, she loves you all. Is uh, Marita still here? I know she is. 
Sweetie, could you just stand up for us so we can all see who you are? I met Maria, I think, maybe the first time she came here. I met her in the parking lot. I met her daughter. And I just dearly love this lady. And uh, she's struggling with uh, physical problems. She lost her husband a while back, so she's struggling with loneliness. And uh, apparently she uh, moved here from Florida. She was involved in a large Adventist church back in Florida, and she was very involved in that. So we wish you well, sweetie, and uh, may God ride on your shoulder wherever you go and whatever you do. Thank you for coming to Arden Hills. This is from Tammy. Yes. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I know your daughter uh, went without sleep to bring you to church, to church a lot of times because I'd see her in the parking and I'd drive you here and uh, she'd go home and grab a couple winks and uh, wow. Well, God bless you. This is, uh, this is from Tammy. A very close friend who I've known most of my life is on hospice care. Her name is Lee Smith. Please pray for her and her family. This is from uh, Mary Hudson. Where are you, Mary? There you are, sweetie. Pray for my friend Mel, who is having heart surgery. Ha having heart surgery Monday, and for my son, who fell and broke his ribs. How many ribs, Mary? Seven. Oh, my goodness. Did he fall off a cliff? I've heard of people breaking one or two ribs, but not seven. Oh, Mary, we have to pray hard for your son. Oh, my goodness. Oh. This is from Jim Day. We would like to pray for Jack. Uh, help me with that name. One more time. Sternico. I always see him sitting up in front here. I know he's a Marine. Who had a mild stroke and is in the VA hospital. His right leg is affected. So we hope to hold Jack up in, in, uh, in a heavy prayer. <clears throat> this is from Barbara West. Noreen Meyer asked for prayer today, whoever Noreen Meyer is. Your sister. Okay, we'll do that, Eddie. Thank you. This is from uh, Joy Lindquist. She says, pray for San Bernardino and pray for law enforcement. You know, uh, I think it was Wednesday, I turned to tell my wife, I was out in the garage, and my wife says, you need to come in here. She says, you need to see what's going on. And I have never seen more professionalism and more courage, I think, and than I can remember that went on here in this, this area with those uh, police officers, the sheriffs, the people. And the first thing I heard from the people that were kept, kept in captivity and had no idea where they were gonna live or die. They said, when they text, their texts were coming out, they said, please pray for us. So I plead with each one of us, let's pray for our town. Let's yes. Uh, <clears throat> Jackie was uh, probably going to be there in that room. And uh, she was on jury duty. Wow. Yes, uh, I got a card from Leanne. We'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, in fact, while we're on the subject, uh, 
Let's read Leanne's request. Please be with the uh, victims' families and the injured from, help me with that name, uh, when, Wednesday's, got it, Wednesday's shooting. I knew many of them. Leanne was in the room, and uh, for some reason, uh, I'm sure there's a story and a reason for it, but Leanne got up and left the room and went to the uh, restroom. And uh, she told me last night that if she had not been up and gone to the restroom, that her back would have been to the shooter and the people that were sitting at the table she was at were shot. I, 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 don't have, I don't have words. I just don't have words. And this is from her husband, Dan. Praise God for his hand of protection over Leanne this last week. Continue to be with those who are still affected by this tragedy. <clears throat> If you've never heard of San Bernardino before, you've heard of it now, worldwide. And uh, those uh, who are able to kneel with me, can we pray? Lord, during the offering this morning, there was a song being played by, and uh, it was, the name of the song was People Need the Lord. Amen. Father, we want you to uh, place your hands on our shoulders today. We want you to walk with us through this life. We want you to put your arm under our arm and help us when we can't move, when we can't walk. We want you to help us meet the gold, your gold. And Lord, our hearts are saddened. First, um, uh, first off, let's pray for each and every one of these prayer requests that these people have sent up here to the base of your throne this morning. And uh, let's pray for all the families here in this area, the police families, the sheriff's families, the FBI's families, the victims' families. Lord, our hearts are broken. And let us, each one, pray for the tragedy and continue to pray as much as we possibly can. Father, we love you. We thank you for each one that's here, and we uh, pray for each one that's not here this morning. We ask that you'll walk with them today and place your hand on their shoulders and help them through this life. Our homes, our children, our families, our loved ones. How important those things, how important those things are to us. We love you, Lord. We love what your son did for us. And we thank you again for the people in this area who showed all that courage in this time of need, in Jesus' name, we pray. And they all said, Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. My name is Hifo, and you've probably seen me sitting in the back for the past month. And that's because I just moved here a couple months ago up to the area. And um, when Pastor Dean asked us if we do anything special, I said, oh, yeah, I know how to sing. So he signed me up for this weekend. <laughs> 
And so I gathered my siblings. These are my younger siblings here. This is Aggie, my youngest sibling, and my younger brother, um, Manu. He's not um, on the program because we didn't know if he would sing with us today. <laughs> and our cousin, Jesse. And we'd like to share a song that's inviting the Holy Spirit here into our atmosphere today. Um, it's so interesting that we decided to do this song after what happened this week. I um, just think of this song as, some, as an invitation for the Holy Spirit to come into our whole community because we really need it now. So we hope you are blessed with this song. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. Sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close nothing can compare you're our living hope your presence lord i've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves My shame is undone, your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcomed here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere, your glory. God is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord, your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness let us become more aware of your presence let us experience the glory of your goodness. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. 
to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Thank you so much. Beautiful. You know, I think, uh, you know, Hebo's been coming here for uh, a few weeks now, and I've been here every week since she first arrived here. And uh, she also has uh, two others who are coming here every week, too. They apparently don't sing. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to hand you a mic. Stand up and just tell folks who you are. And if you're related to Hebo, I can't remember for sure. But <laughs> My name is Brayden. Um, I'm Hebo's wife. <laughs> 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 but um, I'm her husband. <laughs> I can't even <laughs> Hi, I've introduced myself before, Cece. Um, just a best friend. <laughs> okay, well, we're glad to have the best friend and wife, I mean, husband here with us. And thank the rest of you for coming, too. These folks are going to make great additions to the Arden Hills Church. Amen. We all have plans. Some of us have plans much more than others. I know when I was a young, young man, I liked to... Uh, to write up my plans way back then, even as I do today. I remember my brothers thinking that it was uh, pretty funny that I would have that, uh, that uh, mindset to write up plans when I was just so young. But most of our lives start with a plan. We make plans for what we're going to do that day. What's in store for us? A list of things to get done. Things at work that need attention, stopping at the store to get groceries, etc. And most days go pretty much as planned, except if you're like me, not all the things get done that you planned on for that particular day. And you have to move some things that you planned over to another day. Fortunately, it's easier to move things on my list than it used to be with the computer. Just highlight it and move it. The bad, bad part is having the time to get it done as the pile gets bigger and bigger during the week. But we all have plans. But there are days in our lives in which our plans really go out the window. Things are not exactly as we planned. Bad things can happen, and you can think of some of those things in your life. I can think of many in mine. Car accident, plane going down, and sudden illness, fires, earthquake, time of war breaking out. We all have interruptions to our plans. One such day that Satan delights in seeing bad things happen to good people happened this past Wednesday and uh, happened when Leanne and others just had the plan that they were going to this meeting. It happened to be a day in which there were two terrorists that wanted to interrupt those plans. Sometimes we don't know why we have such interruptions as that. And I can't say that I really understand all of God's ways and how he allows some things to happen and other things not. But I can say that we can learn through all of this. And we are so grateful this morning for, for Leanne and for the time in which she made that decision to go to the restroom five minutes later than she originally planned to.
I'm sure that almost all engaged couples are excited about their wedding and marriage plans. You married couples remember what it was like when you were engaged, probably. Hopefully you still remember. You had fallen in love with the dream of your life, and that dream person had fallen in love with you. You know, marriage, that perfect arrangement. There was once a young couple who had made plans. They were excited about their marriage. The groom was all excited as the wedding date was approaching. The bride was all a twitter as the date every young lady lives for was just around the corner. But something happened, and things didn't go exactly as they planned. It was never in their goals for the young lady to become pregnant before their wedding night. But here she was, with child. And I know maybe everyone could think in situations like this, oh, it's too bad that that happened that way. They don't even more careful. But you know, they had abstained. The young lady had a question mark of, how can this be? I have never slept with a man. How can this be? Her husband did his best to trust her, believe her in her honesty. He couldn't figure it out either, and he had a decision to make. Should he believe his sweetheart when she said she had been faithful to him, or should he break off the engagement? I mean, how did she really get pregnant? This was not exactly as they had planned, but it was exactly how God had planned. And the story is told to us in Matthew chapter 1 the miracle that Mary was soon to give birth to Jesus. Our plans and God's plan for our lives are not always on the same track, are they? I do not see anything in the scripture where the angel announcing God's plan asked Mary or Joseph if this plan would be acceptable to them. God simply told them his plan and his will for their lives. And God knew that he could trust in these two young people to do as they were called to do. And I hope that God knows that he can trust in his people here to be able to listen to his voice and do what we are called to do. It's often confusing to us, isn't it? We often wish we knew more about his plan for us. Why did this horrible event happen this past Wednesday? Where was God when the 14 were murdered? Do we trust when we cannot see or understand his leading? And why aren't his plans always easy anyway? You know, you'd think, God, he's all-powerful. He could make things easier for us, couldn't he? You'd think that if we are gracious enough to go along with his plan, that he would at least make it better for us. We've all had the traumatic experiences. Some events of life that we lived with, but we don't understand even to this day. Some things that we complain about, some that we grieve about, some that make it difficult for us to sleep at night, some make it difficult for us to do certain tasks, bumps in the road, change of our plans. And these things, though, can be useful in accomplishing God's plan for your life rather than Satan's plan. If we trust him, like Joseph trusted Mary, it didn't make sense to him, and it doesn't make sense to us either. But we know in whom we must trust. Sometimes we think that if we do the will of God, as you've heard in my favorite quotation from Christ's Object Lessons, as we cooperate with the will of God, it becomes omnipotent, 
combined with his, our will with his. And we think that if we do the will of God that everything will be a bed of roses and life will be without trial and difficulty. It's when we get away from doing God's will that we end up having trouble, but that's not true. God could have worked it out so that the tax could have been collected either before Joseph and Mary were married or after the baby was born. He could have done that, couldn't he? He's God. I mean, Mary was so pregnant that she just barely got to Bethlehem before she had a baby. Surely God could have worked things out better than that, don't you think? Well, then the baby did not even have a proper place of birth. The baby was born in a manger because there was no room in an inn. All the motels were filled. Think about that a moment. Most of us would be very upset about an occasion like that. A baby to be born, a baby God himself arranged for, no one to help, no hospital, no midwife, no bed, and worst of all, no bathroom. I know some people who would really be upset about that no bathroom. Mary is exhausted, ready to deliver, and there's no room, any place. What's with God's planning sometimes, don't you wonder? Do you think they might have questioned God that night? It certainly was not exactly the way they planned it. Then to make matters more difficult, the little family was forced to flee to Egypt because of the threat of King Herod. Not an easy trip in those days, I'll tell you. But yet we can see the hand of God at work because he warned them of the danger so they could flee. But fine, why didn't he just make the king's heart soften like he had done with others in times past so that they would not have to flee at all? Why? Especially since all the babies two years old and younger were killed by Herod's men after Mary and Joseph were gone. What a horrible thing. All those little lives lost. Why? Some things we do not understand. Sure don't understand. But this we may know. Things did not go as Mary and Joseph planned, number one. Number two, that God's plan is not always an easy plan. And number three, that they were safe and so are we whenever we follow God's leading. Amen. So Jesus grew in wisdom and stature, the Bible says, in favor with God and man. And none of that was easy for him. But he did it because he has an incredible desire to exercise his ultimate plan of salvation. And God tells us of the two roads for us, the broad road and the easy way, the easy road. The one that almost everyone takes is the way that leads to destruction. But the narrow way, the straight way, the more difficult way, one that few in comparison travel is the way that leads to eternal life. And so we see that God's plan is one that we have to be focused to stay on the path. So when things are not exactly like you planned in your life, remember that Christ chose a path that, that led to a cross for you. For you and me, God does not plan an easy trip but he does plan a rewarding destination worth whatever rough road we travel. And he promises to be with us as we take it. As was read by James this morning in Isaiah 43, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you rock, walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. When things are not exactly as you plan, when things are difficult, God is still there. 
even passing through the waters of the shadow of death. And we don't understand why some die younger than others, why some tragedies happen. Some families go through so much. But we do know that he has a greater reward for his children around the corner when he comes. And his protection extends because when we pass away, what happens? We fall asleep, don't we? A dreamless sleep. One of which, that if we were all to suddenly drop dead at this moment and wake up, we wouldn't wake up here, but we'd wake up without any realization of a passing of time. What a blessing that God has for us in that. I came across the story of a man who I'm sure must have been embarrassed by the heritage of his family. Can you imagine being part of a family where the father was a mystic? Grandfather was a murderer, sacrificed his own children in ritual sacrifices. His dad was a criminal who ravaged the houses of worship and made a mockery of all the believers. More thought went into superstition and voodoo practices than in the education of the children of that day. It was a dark, dark time in which to live. What do you do when your grandfather followed black magic? Your father was a scoundrel and your nation as a whole was corrupt. Do you follow suit? We all know that many who are alcoholics are alcoholics because their parents were alcoholics. They followed along, followed suit. But with God, we can break the pattern. So the assumption was that he would follow suit too. He was certainly influenced by all of that. In fact, this young man was branded as a delinquent before he was born. A chip off the old rotten block. Going to be just like his dad, people would say. But they were wrong. He wasn't just like his dad or his grandfather. He reversed the trend. He defied the odds. He stood like a dam against the water of evil of his day and rerouted the future of the nation. We may not lead a nation, but we can stand like a dam that holds back water for God. His achievements were so remarkable, we still tell his story some 2,600 years later. The story of King Josiah. The world has seen wiser and more powerful kings than Josiah. But history has never seen a more courageous king than young Josiah. Born some 600 years before Jesus, Josiah inherited a fragile throne, a tarnished crown. Indeed, this was not exactly the way that he would have planned it. The temple was in disarray. God's law was nearly forgotten. The people worshipped whatever God it was that they desired. But by the end of Josiah's 31-year reign, he didn't live a long time either. The end of that reign, the temple had been rebuilt, the idols had been destroyed, and God's law elevated to a place of prominence once again. Josiah's grandfather, King Manasseh, was remembered as the king who filled Jerusalem from one end to the other with the people's blood. Josiah's father, the bad seed King Ammon, died at the hands of his own officers. The citizens formed a posse and killed the assassins, and eight-year-old Josiah ascended the throne and died in his early 40s. Early in Josiah's reign, Josiah had made a brave choice. He skipped through his family scrapbook until he found an ancestor who was worth emulating. Sometimes it takes a child to lead us. 
2 Kings 22.2 says he lived as his ancestor David had lived. And he did not stop doing what was right. He chose his mentor. By the age of 22, Josiah had the people tear down the altars of Baal. He broke up the Asheroth idols and beat them into powder. He burned the bones of the false priests. Not exactly on a public relations tour was he. But he wasn't finished. Four years later, he turned his attention to the temple. It was in a shambles. And Josiah was determined that something had to happen. An entire nation received grace because of the integrity of one man who turned an awful past into a more beautiful future. In the same way that God used Josiah, who had such miserable family history for the immediate generations before him, who had such a rough start to life where people were very pessimistic about what kind of king that he would be. A rough start that was not exactly as he would have planned it. In that same way, through whatever has happened in your life or the generations before you, God can use you and will. You can make the choice to rise above the past traumas, rise above the past traumas that are beyond your understanding, Rise above the past mistakes that you may regret and make a difference with your life and in the lives in whom you touch. As Jesus said in John's Gospel, human life comes from human parents, but spiritual life comes from the Spirit. Events of our life are not always exactly as we would plan or easy. Circumstances and happens, happenings well beyond our control. But there is one thing we can control. Choice. We can control choice. Bad things do happen to good people. But take heart. Before ever becoming bitter, before ever giving up, remember you have a father who sticks with you even through those awful times. The Lord Jesus came to earth 2,000 years ago to make sure he did everything he could to succeed in the plan that he wants for your life. And he offers the grace that you and I do not deserve. Galatians 4, verse 7. Through God you are a son or a daughter. And if you are a son, then you are certainly an heir. That's God's plan for you. Father in heaven, it's been a difficult week. But through all the events of life, we know that you have a plan for us. We know that you are standing by us in the most difficult of times. And we pray for all of the families who have been hit so hard with this tragedy. We pray for the other tragedies that go on day by day around the world. So many ways in which Satan works his awful, awful things that happen to people. The hearts that learn to hate and exercise terrible things with that hate. Fill us with your love. Fill us with as much understanding as we can have and help us to be patient to understand more after Jesus comes and help us to trust even though we don't understand and believe that you are here for us, that you have that plan because we are heirs and you want each of us to be there. May we realize in circumstances such as these how important it is for us to be faithful to Jesus, 
to, as has been sung here to us this morning, to have him recognize, to have us recognize his presence with us day by day, to realize that he's there in support. And so, Father, we have thanksgiving in our hearts this morning as well as grieving. Most of all, we are thankful that Jesus succeeded on our behalf and we will see him soon. In his name we pray. Amen.